State Governor Babaji Desong Louis this afternoon expected to address residents of Lagos State as COVID-19 incident commander for Lagos. The governor is expected to, among other things, bring an update on the new variant Omicron, as well as plans to keep the residents safe. Let's cross live to the governor's address. To a painful episode in the history of our state with the release of a white paper later today. This, in my view, is a moment that beckons for us to define who and what we are as a people. To be a center of excellence, we must be a center of truth. To be a smart city, we must be a just one. To be a prosperous state, we must establish ourselves as a peaceful entity. And to achieve the greater Lagos of our dreams, we must learn to live in harmony, even amidst inevitable disagreement in times like this. With anger and animosity too quick and fast at hand, it is easy to hide behind our own prejudices, treating them as deeper truths instead of the superficial lies that they are. It is far too easy to take sides and to choose emotion over facts, even when the truth is to be found in the shades of nuance. It is easy to, to choose darkness over light, to take perverse delight in playing unhelpful games of cynicism and suspicion, to cling to beliefs that do not carry the weight of verifiable evidences. To become a champion of prejudices is to own a fleeting and a false victory it is a victory of rancor over reason, of vengeance over justice, of hunger over compassion. Today, I stand before you to declare that I reject this path, and I invite you all to do the same. The choice confronting us today is between restoring a greater harmony or doing a greater harm. I choose harmony over harm. As your governor, it is my task to explain why all negotiations should join me on this path that promises a more beneficial future to all. Fellow negotiants, let me at this point bring to fore some of our very important contexts that we must never lose sight of. You will recall that the Judicial Panel of Inquiry was originally inaugurated to investigate allegations of police brutality which were committed by the disbanded SARS in Lagos State. It was in the aftermath of what happened on October 20, 2020, that I decided to, to expand the mandate of the panel to include investigating what really happened at the night at Lekito Plaza. As a matter of good faith and a sincere commitment to uncovering the truth, we constituted a panel of individuals that we believe were independent, were credible, and representative of the various stakeholder community interested in the movement against police brutality. Apart from the chairman of the panel, being a respected retired jurist, various stakeholders, including the youth, NSAS protesters themselves, the police, and civil society groups were all represented on the panel. I'm sure no member of the panel can claim that the state government made any attempt to influence them in any way throughout the duration of its sitting. While I commend the panel for undertaking its task to the best of its, of the, of its abilities, it is however regrettable that the panel's work and the leakage of an unauthorized version of the report has generated tension. Sadly, a deep wound has been reopened. The heated exchanges among various shades of opinion on the report have unfortunately put us at the risk of meeting 
the larger picture. The fact that what we all seek is common, is a land in which we're all safe and secure. Law enforcement agents are trusted and justice is guaranteed for all. As I've stated earlier, we have no intention to engage in histronics or further inflame the passion on a matter that has generated intense interest and conversation, both nationally and internationally. Our decision and our actions will be based entirely on the law, the weight of evidence, and an unblemished respect for the truth. Let me, at this junction, say that I have never been in any doubt as to the sincerity, the patriotism, and the noble motivations of both the organizers of the and the participants in the movement to an end to, of the human rights abuses by the now disbanded Special anti robbery Squad, SARS. It is also on record that the federal government accepted all the demands of the protesters, including the immediate scrapping of SARS. The National Economic Council, NEC, also recommended the establishment of state panels of inquiry into cases of police brutality. And the Labour State government was the very first to set up its own panel. I can boldly say that no state took the advocacy of police reform and justice in the face of the documented brutality more seriously than we did in Lagos. We have so far paid over 400 million in the compensation to victims of police brutality in line with the recommendations of the panel. My good people of Lagos State, you will also recall that in solidarity with the protesters, I joined the youth at various points during the demonstration, particularly at the Lekki Toll Plaza and in Alausa. I received the charter of demands of the protesters and promised to pass them to the president and commander in chief of the armed forces, President Muhammad Buhari. I kept my words and I passed on the demands to the president who promised to act promptly on the issues raised. However, perhaps as a result of the entrenched lack of trust between government and the government over the years, the protesters responded to government's concessions with skepticism and the demonstrators continued even growing in intensity. Regrettably, we had been very well, what had been very well organized and a peaceful protest were subsequently hijacked in different parts of the country, particularly in Lagos. In the ensuring descent into anarchy, many of our compatriots were caught up in the violence. Several policemen were killed. Public and private property, including critical infrastructure, were set on fire, leading to losses estimated into several billions of naira. At that point, I imposed a coffee to restore normalcy in Lagos. We had only one goal in mind, which is the maintenance of law and order and the protection of citizens going about their daily lives. This is more than a legal duty. It is a sacred obligation under the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which I swore to uphold. In my inaugural speech as your governor on the 29th of May, 2019, I said, and I quote, let us explore how we can establish a harmony of interests and avoid the growing tendencies to focus on those things that differentiate and divide one Lagosian from another. By dint of providence, this small tract of land intersected and surrounded by waterways and lagoon has become home 
to roughly 22 million people with their various dreams and aspirations. End of quote. It's therefore my earnest desire that all of us, the government, the youth, the protesters, the police, and other security agencies learn the appropriate lesson from the NSAS protests, particularly the Lekki Toll incident, with a view to averting any reoccurrence to the detriment of our dear states. It is a testimony to our strength and to our resilience as a people that despite the huge losses incurred because of these terrible incidents, we have bounced back with our economy as vibrant, as viral as ever. I have no doubt whatsoever that our prospects are as bright as ever and that the best lies ahead of us in Lagos State and in Nigeria. My dear Lagosians, let me remind you of our collective strength as a people. We are that social collective who through the resilience of our spirit confronted an unseen enemy called COVID-19. In our common resolve, we overcame the worst of the pandemic. We are the great people who triumph over terrible explosion at Adosoba, an incident in which many lives and property were lost. Just a month ago, we rose above the differences of our tribes and our tongues. We rally around our inner strength to rescue survivors of the collapsed Ikoi Gerald building and we console those that, love, that lost their loved ones together. The testament of the resilient of our spirit rests in how we rise after every adversity. This is who we are. This is the true spirit of Lagos. Our resilient and irrepressible spirit has it, has also propelled us to show our empathetic nature in the face of tribulations. This how long defined us as a people and is also at the roof of the just clamor for an end to police brutality. Going forward, dear Lagosians, we shall facilitate better communication between our youth and the state security machinery to resolve issues before they become intractable. We will make it easier for our young people to initiate formal complaints of any human rights violation through our Ministry of Justice. We will also improve the coordination between the state government and the security agencies, including the police and the military. In this vein, we are studying how to improve security policy formulation, information sharing, and clearly rules of engagement in terms of social unrest. Just as we have established the mechanism to compensate all those who, love, who lost either their homes, their businesses, and their livelihood to the violent destruction in October 2020, we shall also establish a detailed procedure for the just compensation of citizens with verifiable claims of any form of police brutality committed during this protest. Dear Lagosians, this month of December, I'll be leading a walk of peace to herald the healing of our land. Let me therefore use this occasion to extend an open invitation to all of our youths, members of the diplomatic corps, civil society groups, students, gentlemen of the press, media, and other stakeholders to join me. I would want Polanyi Palano, 
popularly called Faust. I would want Debo Adebayo, Mr. Macaroni. I would want an activist lawyer, Mr. Dele Famoroti, Faroti me. I would want Temito Kwema Jekodumi. I would want Mr. Shekun Awosonya. I would want Adetong, just Adetong, who draws me every day. I would want the legendary son of Fela Sheonkuti. I would also want the Commissioner of Police, Mr. Akim Odumus. I want the commander of the IRS, TSP Yinka Egbeyemi, to join me on this historic march for their Lagos. Nobody will build this city for us. No nation will build the state for us. Let us show the world who we are. No foreign media will change negatively our narrative. We are Lagosians a people of great renown, driven by the irrepressible spirit of Lagos. I want to thank you all for listening. God bless Lagos State. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you very much.